Oh, man. Sometimes it's just a good morning on the internet. Just a good time. It stinks. This whole place stinks. I think those gym, the Jim Fail Nation and shit's funny as fuck. Like the one guy on Jack 3D memes, I think, or Jacked memes or whatever it is. Like he's kind of a fan of mine and I'm a really big fan of his meme page. And then I started like seeing myself on there, like the ridiculous shit I've said or like the, the looks are yeah. somewhat meme faces. And I'm like, this is like, a this is a big deal. When you're part of a meme page, it becomes a big deal. I secretly wish I had a, a meme page that no one knew it was mine. I just had one and it was fucking hilarious. Awesome. Just a run one, right? Yeah. Like, you ran it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I like the guys that run meme pages. They're like, yeah, got a big dick. <laughs> sure, my meme page. She thinks I'm sexy. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. <clears throat> All right, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferrosi. Here's my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Good morning. As well as our esteemed guest today, the Snack King himself, Mr. Dean Perone. Hello. <sighs> Dean, it's good to see you. Good to be here. It's you been, are been you a are, while. It has been a minute. You are looking very tan, looking pretty, looking pretty sleek and in shape, too. Yeah, it's Florida living. I know. I'm doing, a little jealous. Doing me well. He showed up yesterday and I'm like, you look like you've been in a tanning bed. But you're from Florida. Yeah. Fuck. Florida stuff. Shit. Yeah. Damn it. Just everyday living. It's like nine, It's like 80 degrees there, sunny, beautiful, by the pool. That's what we were saying. We're, we're all fucking pasty white and still kind of chubby chin. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And Dean's over there like clean cut, tan. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, so how was life, Dean? How's everything going? This is good. Uh, just, just plugging along, trying to... Uh, Get the diet in check finally after it look, four four year layoff. <laughs> it looks like you've been so you've had a crazy busy year. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, Dean Perone is a top athlete at X and Sledge Supplements as well as a salesman here at X and Sledge Supplements. You play an integral role of making sure supplements are sold, both direct to consumer yeah. and business to business. Yeah, best of both worlds, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, like I've I've been here for. Five years, right? I a little over five years now. That's what I wanted to dive yeah. into is like you, the, the, you're getting ready to go this weekend to an event for Axe and Sledge at Guy Cisternino's grand opening of his gym. Yep. And then, but you made the video, you've been here for five years. Five years. Yeah. A lot has happened in five years. Mayhem. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, the, the growth has been ridiculous, obviously. <laughs> for, I mean, I think when I started, there was, Obviously, we, we weren't in this building. There was probably about eight people, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like, I don't, uh, very small warehouse. There's a couple people in the warehouse. And then to see what this thing has grown into, both Axe and Sledge, obviously, All-American Roughneck. Now we have Just Work Energy, 40-something, close to 50 employees, uh, multiple warehouses, this building. Um, and to be here for all of it has been pretty wild to watch it's pretty cool <laughs> i was telling him i had a, a facebook memory come up we were shooting content for aar me jay and him in his dad's shop and it said from eight years ago and i'm like i was like no that's wrong like and then i'm like looking at the dates i'm like holy fuck because like i'm so used to saying like oh yeah we we've had aar for three years oh we've had it for five, five years. years oh sixth year Dude, it's been eight years since we started All American Roughneck. Eight years. Like that's insane. And, and what's funny is, is we met Dean. Was it 2016 at the Arnold Classic? We were at the Blackstone booth. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. you came over yep. with um, Jack. Jack. Yeah, from yeah. Yeah, the oldest, most shredded man I've ever met. The most shredded he's, older guy I've ever met in my entire. Still shredded. Still shredded. shredded. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you guys came over and. Uh, because you were with 5% at that time. Yep. That was when Rich Piano was still fucking blasting away. Yep. Um, and you came over and we were all just shooting the shit. And it was like, man, fucking great dude. That was awesome. Like, what a swell guy. Like, just coming over to say hi, shoot the shit, have fun. And then, like, that's where the friendship, like, that's the seed that was planted. Yeah, because I think that first year, because he knew you a little bit. Like, yeah. Jack did. Yeah, because he's, he's been in it forever. Yeah. And I, I knew of you, of course. And then he was, we, we left the 5% booth to go walk around. He's like, oh, I, was going, I want to go say what's up to Seth. So I was like, yeah, let's go. Because I'd never met you. So yeah, we went up and uh, talked to you that year. 
And then I think the next year, also at the Arnold, I probably ran into you and, yep. and talked to you. And then we were where, when I met Bob and you together, I think we were like in, was it the Anaheim Fit Expo? It was somewhere in that same time, 16, 17. We were, it was, because uh, in, when was it? Mm, no. That's, we were at the LA Fit Expo. Maybe that's, that might have been it. Because yep. we went to, ah, uh, fuck, what was it? How did it go? Because we got hooked up with Matt Daniels in the Fit Expos. Because that's whenever we, we that realized we Texas, had, in the that Woodlands. was in 16, though. Yeah. In 16 is whenever we went to the Houston at the Woodlands, that uh, the American Fit Expo. Yeah. We went down there. Uh, yeah, that's was when that we were. Was that where I met you then, that one? Or was it the L.A.? Because it was in Texas. And then I think L.A. might have been in, uh, it's earlier in the year. L.A. is usually in January. Because at that expo, though, I had left, because I was with 5% Nutrition for about yeah. three years. I left uh, right before Rich died, and that's when I went with Cass Martin, and I was with her company. Yeah, because you were with Work Ethic. That's what, yeah, that's when in, I saw you guys together. In, uh, and we, at the Arnold. And we were at Primeval then. No, we were, 2017, we were at Blackstone Booth Yep. at the Arnold. And that's whenever we realized, because when we were down in Texas, we saw Cali Muscles line. At the American yeah. Fit Expo, and it was fucking batshit crazy, and he's slapping people and talking about hyphy mud, and we're like, what <laughs> the fuck is going on? Meanwhile, it was like when we hung out with Callie at that time, he was like a, such a calm, like really nice guy, yeah. knew everything yeah. about my bodybuilding career, and I'm like, oh, you're, you're, you're a different person. You're a normal person, but then you're just this psychopath slapping people, eating hyphy mud. <laughs> On camera and stuff. <laughs> that, that's when we realized uh, that the expos was YouTube. YouTube. Whole different crowd, whole different personas. Yep. It was YouTube. And the whole ride home, we were like, YouTube, Bob. We got to do YouTube. <laughs> yep. That's when yeah. 2016. And we were trying to figure out how to do it. And we were like, just be our... Let's, you were like, just be you. And I'm like, that's kind of scary to put on the internet there. <laughs> but then... And, uh, and then that's whenever we... Uh, Came home, started doing YouTube, and then 2017 at the Arnold was whenever the shit was fucking out of control. Mm -hmm. And we realized we had something pretty special. And then that's whenever we all met together. And then that's when uh, the seed was planted at the end of the year, early 2018, of being like, hey, we might do this ourselves. And then uh, after that, when we started Axe and Sledge, you and I were like, we, we're, we, need a, we need an athlete, like a guy. And it was like, you're the guy. And I'm like, I know I'm the guy, but I'm not going to be the guy forever. We need a team. We need to, everybody builds a team. And then it was like, what about Dean? And we're like, <laughs> there was one name that came up <laughs> out of there every one. professional bodybuilder, <laughs> yeah. all this. And it was just because of uh, you being such a good dude and how cool it was that every time we saw you, but you were always so ambitious and people loved your content online. And we're like, fuck yeah. And then. Well, yeah, because I remember you initially too talking about all my unboxings at the time, right? Because that, that's, I, that's that, what you guys. I yeah. swear it's what <laughs> has created a monster in my own household. I swear that's yeah. where my fucking habits came from. I remember you were like every every time I go onto your Instagram page, you're just opening free shit and <laughs> opening your boxes and showing people and and, and people still love it. Yeah, because it's cool. Every day you were opening something, I fucking loved it. I was getting a lot of now stuff. Now I expect an Amazon box yeah. at my house every day. Yeah, like, I want to open up something cool. But no, that was, that was, it's, it is wild that it has been five years. Five fucking years. Well, yeah, because I think, so when we initially spoke, it was at the 19 Arnold, right? When did, when did you, Axe, Axe had a booth. I was still 19 at, Arnold yeah. is whenever we had the booth. Yeah. So I remember March of I was 2019 to talk to you guys at that Arnold. I was still with work ethic. Yeah. But I remember telling Tracy before I went, even like, if they make me an offer, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, I, like I knew in my head, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, cause I knew it was a much better fit, uh, obviously. And then, uh, yeah, it, yeah. So it's, it's been awesome because number one, two, like you said, like you, you could have picked anybody obviously you have tons of ifbb pro bodybuilders people you know uh much higher elite athletes than myself right i don't know so they're not it, it, it's it's cool though to and i'm sure for people like watching or listening to people that know me too it, it shows that it's not always you have to compete you all i mean which i have competed but i mean a lot of people think like to become 
a sponsored athlete. You have to like compete. You have to be a pro. You have to be this or that. And you technically don't always have to be, uh, depending on the cases. But so yeah, it's it's been awesome to be given the chance from you guys from day one, and then uh, to be kind of like the first male athlete that's that's been here has been awesome. And to then, like you said, to watch all this stuff grow has been like insane. Mm -hmm. to, to kind of be and be a part of it, you know, like that. Like when I did that video last week or two yeah. weeks ago, it's like. I've filmed so much content and videos and a lot of stupid shit we do. And, and, and I mean, that's Dr. The, that's, Dean and that's the whole fun of snacking. this. King. Yeah, it's, it's like to to be able to come to a place and be able to be who you are and do whatever the hell. I mean, for the most part, you guys let me do whatever the hell I want. Well, well that's to, to a certain extent. Well, sure. I was going to say, <laughs> as you being, I don't know if people realize how successful you are here in in what you do. Like you're you're incredibly successful as an athlete direct to consumer sales, and then business to business, you do an outstanding job in that world as well. It's kind of like, okay, so how? You're just a dad of four girls. Yeah. You're not an IFBB pro. You've, you have you don't compete at a national level in the NPC. Um, like, how are you so successful? Like, that's the question that a lot of people have. Like, dude, there's people that, there's Mr. Olympias. There's... Uh, top five at the Olympia, 212, Open, Classic, like you name it, that are not as successful as you at what you do. Yeah, so the I, question would be, like, if people were asking for advice, like, how is that possible? Yeah, and, and I think people would be surprised, as you know, because, I mean, you've talked about it at, at, like, how well I do with, like, code uses com compared to that. Because, again, I think the perception is, like, Oh, this guy's Mr. Olympia. He must sell so much. You got 50,000 followers, yeah. Dean. Like, great job, but this dude's got 750 yeah. or a million. And people don't realize that a lot of times when it comes to code uses or sales, it, a lot of times it means nothing, Because yeah. as we've seen. Um, but to me, it's always just been being myself. Like, I mean, we, we've talked about that. And I've had people tell me that. You've had people tell you that. Yeah, I mean, Everybody. Said, yeah, for, you said you've talked to people at gymnastics that, that use my code. It's because I never try to portray anything. I'm not like I, I'm an idiot, right? I'm like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not. You're I'm a not, you're a smart idiot. I, I'm like I I never try to preach like you have to eat tilapia and asparagus every day. Like people that follow me know uh, I eat like shit, you know, eighty percent of the time. But I work out. I try to cur you know what I mean? It, it's like. I'm the guy that like most people out there like they just like working out, right? They eat pretty well most people struggle with food for the most part right uh and then it's just like like i said i'll enjoy a, a bourbon you know on yeah. the weekend or something so it's like unless i was doing a prep obviously like i still live life on my own terms and and have fun doing it and and then on the flip side of that i still try to train hard and eat somewhat decent and, and it's like but i think i just just being myself uh people can relate to that right i was just gonna that's, say I, mean, I think it's i think that's the key thing of all of it is just being relatable to most people can resonate with me as opposed to a 280 pound shredded mr olympia that you're never going to obtain that physique or, or be like that i was hoping you were going to say something along those lines of because of you being yourself and because you're just a normal human being striving for the greatest life you could possibly have like for me looking in it's like Dean's just such a good dude, and people are like, I want, what a great guy, normal guy, working hard, trains in the morning, yeah. eats, eats, eats the foods that we like to eat, but trains hard, like, everything that you just said is why, because, like, the, the gymnastics people, that's whenever I really, because we are just, we were like, how the fuck is it possible that the, 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 the code uses, how is this, how is that? And then I'm talking to people over at gymnastics, and I was like, yeah, Dean's coming in. They're like, oh, I love Dean. And there was a group of people, and I'm like, you all love Dean. And I was like, yeah. I was like, we're going we're gonna to do this and blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and then it's, yeah, yeah, I use this code. And I'm like, all of you use his code. And it's like, oh, my God, that's why. Because of our demographic of people that, that follow us aren't just in the lift. They like lifting weights, but they don't all compete. They're into just that normal aspect of life of working out, having a family, having fun, living life, as you put. And that's where it comes from. It's those people that are just there 
they do like might like following that 280 pound guy but they're like yeah i'm going to support dean man dean's always answering my questions online goes in the dms answers dms comments on all my stuff like you are you have submerged yourself in it and and watching i'm like this is fucking wild it's just it's in it and knowing you personally at this level you're just a normal dude yeah i well and i'm glad you brought up the like answered questions and dms that, that too I, I which i've said a million times like that's one thing I always try to do, and I think that's helped me huge, you know, a, a huge amount because we all we know, and it's happened to me where you ask somebody a question, they never get back to you. And I know some people, you know, like you have hundreds of thousands of followers. If somebody has a million followers, like I don't expect them to always see, but like again, I don't have that many followers, but I always try to answer every question I can, um, even if it's for the most part. Some of them aren't. I mean, some of them can take a two second. I'm trying to be nice, but but no, like some some questions, as we all know, could take a two second Google search. But they'll ask me and then wait for me to answer. And I do though. So, but I'm saying it, it's. I think that goes a long way because most people don't answer DMs on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. I mean, that, that's what I was gonna say, dude. Like. The, your your success with everything it it did not happen by you just showing up one day and it working oh, like yeah. you've been doing this for a decade of helping people like th that's what i've always told people like like how does dean do it i'm like dude he's the most consistent consistently in people's dms commenting on their posts bringing them into our network bringing them into our family group like Dude, you're everywhere. Every post I see in Demo Crew, Axe and Sledge, you're in there somewhere. And it's not time. like it's work to Dean. That's no, that's you're, what you're, we, you're, it's yeah. like you're enjoying it. Yeah. You're having yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah like you're I interacting with people. Like, yeah, like I, like I, I love this industry, right? Like I, I love working out. I love eating, as we've said. And but it's like being able to do this to me is like it doesn't feel like work at all. Like you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Being on social media is fun to me. Interacting with people is fun to me. And all of that to be wrapped around supplements and fitness industry is like fucking just like icing on the cake. So to me, it's like, it's it's funny. You know, for a long time, before I was actually making good money doing this, like I would always still be on my phone and Tracy would, you know, she'd be like, oh, you're always on your phone. And I'm like, I used to be like fucking working, even though I wasn't really making money. <laughs> now that I'm making money, I'm always like fucking working. And she's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> So <laughs> now it's true. It, it, but, it, it's but, so funny. Like if there if there is a if there were a correct way to handle social media, it it's how you do it. Like everything you post on your shit, dude, is not for the likes or for the comments. It's legit just something that's happening in your day. Whether it's you and the girls are at the pool or going to the beach, or it's you guys cooking something wild and having all the food. It's laid not. Out that's together. the thing. It's not a joke. It's not like a facade. No, no it's, Dean's doing it for a purpose. It's not <laughs> for the internet. It's yeah. for you and your family. But you just put it on the internet. Yeah, yeah, we're eating that shit. Like the creamies. Like that. That's the thing. Like look at some of the creamies and some of the videos that you've posted millions of views on them. And it's just you being like, yeah, we, I'm going to put this one on the internet. It's sick. And you don't be like, yeah, I got a million views. And I'm like, I saw it. Dude. I'm fucking killing it, dude. But it's funny that like you're like. I was going to make this anyway. If people wanted to have success on the internet, if there's one person to emulate, it's Dean Perone. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a top professional or a fucking nobody, pay attention to people. Be yourself. Yeah, that, that's, well, even when I started, like when I got onto Instagram and I didn't really know what the hell I was doing, uh, I, this is back when I was with 5% Nutrition, that, that there's a, a kid named well he's a kid because he's younger and a lot younger than me but his name's josh bryan and he actually prepped me i think for my third show that was one thing and he at the time had about a hundred thousand followers but that was the that was like the advice he gave me he's like dude just be yourself he's like post what you're gonna post don't try to copy someone's page don't try to be somebody he's like just post what you post he's like people are either gonna like you or they're not gonna like you you can't win them all you know and that's kind of i've i've always stuck with that and kind of gave him credit for telling me that and that's why i've always tried to pass that on and then, like, a funny story real quick, because I just found this out myself. At the Arnold, uh, we all know Goob, right? Of yeah. John, John Dorsey. <laughs> so, I, which I've known for a long time. <clears throat> I've actually known him since 2016. And uh, he introduced me to his girlfriend at the Arnold. And uh, he told the story, which I didn't really, I mean, I kind of probably remember, but don't really recall. But he brought that up. He said, he introduced me to her and said, I've known Dean since 2016. And uh, he said at the time, he had all these like different affiliates and sponsorships, like peanut butter companies and cookie companies, like all this shit back then, right? Yeah. And he's like, I reached out to him to ask him how to get started. You know, he's like, I just emailed him or, or DM'd him and, and asked like, how are you getting all this free stuff? 
like, what do I do to get started? And he, he told me, or he was telling her that I sent him back multiple paragraphs, just telling him what to do, how to reach out to the companies, all this shit. And he's like, to this day, it was one of the nicest like DMs I've ever got. Like he just helped me. And I was thinking, and I'm thinking in my head, well, fucking thank God. Cause we know what Goob does now. Right? So, <laughs> so I'm like, thank God I'm on his good side. <laughs> He he's loved, calling out the he, whole internet. He loved but it, doing but, that. But that goes back to what we're saying. It's like just answering. Like, who would have known? I mean, look how big he is now. Huge. And here I help. You know, helped him out Every, by just being nice and just answering the question back in 2016 with him. He it's said like, he said the same thing about me whenever I met him at the just recently at Natural Body Natural, last year. Yeah. And he's like, and he said a similar thing. He's like, dude, he's like, I've been a fan for this, this long, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I met you at the 2018 such and such. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like in my head, I was like, what did I say? He's like, you gave me, you just took the time and shot the shit with me exactly like you're doing right now. And just like you're doing with everybody in the line. I'm like, he's like, and he mentioned, I said some off the wall shit. Yeah. about like training or this or that. And he's like, he's like, and that's whenever I was like, this guy doesn't give a fuck. And I'm like, <laughs> nice. Look back. I have a picture of him posted because he said you posted a picture of me okay. on your stories because I did like a collage post. Probably you probably had you do it, mm -hmm. uh, but it was from one uh, one of the shows in 2018. Yeah, and I'm like, I was like, no shit. And he, I was like, man, I'm really glad I'm on your good side. Yeah. Like, I'm glad I didn't say something. <laughs> That's dumb. what I was thinking when he was telling this story. I was like, Phew, man, he <laughs> is one of the funniest people on the internet right now. Oh, yeah. you follow him at all? Yeah. It is a fucking riot. He does not care about anything. No. Zero. Uh, yeah. I, we, I love it, man. He's I told him, I'm like, you're doing the Lord's work. We had, <laughs> we had we had Mark in from Uprising. Yeah. And uh we did the podcast and we were talking and he was talking to Goob. And uh then we just got on the topic after they hung up the phone and everything. And it, and I was like, he loves this shit. And he's like, dude, he loves fucking with people. It is like his favorite <laughs> thing to do in the world. And I'm like, yeah. really? And he's like, dude. He's like, he gets, he just gets so excited about it because he's like, they get, people get so worked up about it. People oh, get yeah. so worked up and he's like, then stop fucking doing dumb shit. Like, why are you being a lying, conniving fuck? Yeah. Why not just be yourself? And I'm like, I, it never made sense to me because you're never going to please everybody, like you said. No. You're never no. going to please the world. Somebody's always going to hate you. It's, yeah. It's yeah. And, and, and going back to like, or what you were talking about, like, posting too like i think that's one thing a lot of people get stuck on too like or one of you said about posting stuff for likes and views it's like i think everyone worries about that to an extent or you go because there was a time a couple of years ago that i kind of got caught up on that and then like i just something clicked in my head where i was like i just don't get, you know what i mean i'm just gonna post and but that's the mindset i think you have to have it's like find your thing and you post and then like you said some people are gonna like it some people aren't they're like it's well, social media. Everybody has a fucking opinion. No isn't what, isn't so. it crazy, too, like you were saying there, like how um, you get caught up in it. Everybody does at some point. Mm -hmm. I think everybody gets caught up in something that they said they never would. You, you know, I never would get caught up in that. I'd never do that. But there was something that occurred in your life, on the Internet, some type of interaction or post or something that set you off. And you're like, fuck, yeah, this is my shit. I need to do this. And like you try something new. And you get caught up in it and then it like works you up. And then all of a sudden it causes anxiety. It starts making you feel not the same way you felt a year ago or six mm -hmm. months ago. And then you're like, fuck me. What an idiot was I? What was I thinking doing all those things? And I think that it, it, and for us to be full grown adults and be able to recognize those things. Yeah. Imagine being like a, a 15 year old, oh, yeah. 16 year old, 17 year old growing up in this social media uh, interaction that like. Dude, people do things, negative things, just for views. Mm -hmm. Like, you're trying to do something positive to get as many views as possible. Yeah. Like, you don't do no negative shit. But now there's people that do negative things to get the That's interactions easy. and get all that stuff. And they're like, now they're craving this attention, and all they are being is negative. That's pretty fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. That is a wild thing. I couldn't imagine being a young person growing up in this environment. Where like, dude, people fucking chew on your oh, ass. Yeah. It's super it, toxic. Fuck your head all up. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. It's, it's really bad. Fuck your head all up as a kid. I I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. I wouldn't want to be a part of it. No, wouldn't want to. Because like you said, I think as as adults or, or whatever, people still struggle with it bad. So I can't even, you know, what I mean, it's like, and we have young kids too. So it's like, 
Oh, they're, they're in the heart of it. Oh, dude. So it's like. I am terrified. I don't even know what's going on. Well, you were, we were just talking about yeah, it last night. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Adeline's going to be 17. Uh, Holy fuck. His daughter's first year in college, spring break just happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, like, like they go to a party and you're like, oh, no, like, I know what happens. Don't do that. Yeah. You, hey, you guys having fun? Um, what do you do? No, nope, don't want to ask what you're doing. Like, fuck, dude. Intense. Yeah, you almost don't want to know. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> like we said, we know what we were doing at that age. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the girls fudge shoot shucks shit i don't bombs. know i don't know how i would be as a parent i have no idea i have no idea it freaks me out it is i i'm having more anxiety as she gets older and after mm -hmm. he was talking about it last night i felt my heart rate go up because i'm like <laughs> oh that's gonna happen in life and cool. you don't but you and again that's another feeling another feeling that you have no clue what to do yeah. with in life what are you supposed to do with it? You're that now. I know why my parents were like, I was sitting up at night waiting for you, and I'm like, Oh, I now I'm starting to get I a little did, bit yeah. of piece of that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have did that. Sorry, mom. <laughs> well, and there's all there's all new shit, right? And, and anybody that has kids that that are older than ours too have already gone through this that are listening. It's like if, whether it's so if it's a girl, I, I don't know. I I feel you might call it a double standard, but I think it's definitely different having girls and boys, right? Obviously. So, so far, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, My mentality with SJ and just feeling this, I'm so, like, yeah, I get it. this is gonna be different. It's like, uh, yeah, and I have I have friends that have boys, you know, and they're like, I always hear they always say the same joke, like, oh, I only got to worry about one, one dick, dick or two dicks. You got to worry about all the dicks. <laughs> I'm like, cool, thanks. Uh, I got four more of these fucking things. Yeah, so I, I've heard that joke a million times, but it's like you as a as a father because I have four girls. It's like you worry about. They start hitting the boy, the boys era, era right? Mm -hmm. Then though they start driving, yep. like driving's a whole nother fucking stress you have. You, you watch them like drive away when right when they turn sixteen, you're like fuck, because that's scary as fuck having them on the road by themselves. <laughs> and then yeah, now I have one that's a freshman in college, which is scary as fuck. Oh, terrifying! <laughs> it's like oh, so these are all God. like new feelings and stresses I've never dealt with yet. Now I'm hitting them all, and I just want to black out. So. <laughs> So Hannah and, I, Hannah, and, Hannah and I were joking about this the other night because we were talking about colleges whenever you guys came in for uh, the Christmas party, and we were, and I mentioned to Tracy about just like fucking cost of college, how it's going, and then she's like, it is a fucking nightmare, and we're there, and she's telling Hannah about all this, and <laughs> Hannah's like, I was like, I was like, you looked a little overwhelmed, babe. She's like, I do not want to think about this yet. I'm like, ah, sorry. I mean, I was just talking to her earlier about it, and it was just because it's yeah. these crazy stressors that come up. And you hear parents like whenever whenever you have a, a young child, you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe my toddler or this or that or my five year old or, oh, my God, school first time at school. He's going to preschool. He's going to this. She's <laughs> going to that. And now I'm like, oh, I, can we go back to that? Oh, yeah. Was can we can we start first grade again? Can we do the fucking play thing? Can we go to a play? Where's the where's like the third grade musical? Can we do that? Because now Adeline's like, Adeline's dead set on going to medical school. Like, bitch is really fucking smart. And I'm like, oh, man. The, 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 whole, the whole reason of me wanting financial freedom and doing all this stuff and working so hard is going to be real. Like, bitch ain't getting financial aid. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, she's not. And I'm like, okay, this is all coming real. And now I, you see memes about toddlers. And I'm like, yeah, I'd rather have shit smeared on the wall. All I got to do is oh, get a yeah. bucket and I wipe that off. Adeline's going to be driving a car, going to fucking school, wanting to do all this crazy shit. And it's like, okay, okay, life is going to be crazy. Yeah, it's all kinds of stress. I remember the first time, I think I may have told you this, like the girls, like they all played soccer, obviously. They they uh, were going to like a some guy used to do this training camp, just like in the next town over. But Tracy used to drive them. And for the, the very first time, I think Peyton took off. The, the four girls went by themselves. I think I might have been up here. Yeah, you, you were. I think I was here, and I'm yep. talking to Tracy, and she's like, oh, they, they went to, uh, I forgot what the fuck, Colt is the guy's name, or but she's like, oh, they went to training with Colt. I'm like, you didn't take them? And she's like, no, Peyton drove. So I was like, all four of them are together in one car, <laughs> like by themselves? This is the first time. And then she's like, 
Oh fuck! Now you have me worried. Because <laughs> I'm like, what if something happens? Tracy like, hops in the car and yeah. like tracking him on the like, 360 it's like, app. It's like a whole nother level of stress, man. It's like, but it's just one thing after the other, like you said. Then you got college and it's like right. partying. So, uh, so from there, uh, uh, you have a very hectic life. You have your life, and we just got done talking about how cool everything you do for the internet and people yeah. and all that. But then you have four children. <sighs> Having one is a lot. Two, even more. Three is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Like, you get three kids, dude. You got to think about different vehicles. You have yeah. four. They're all over the age of 13 uh, now? Yeah, now that, well, now 19, 17, 15, 12. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah that's a little. So, I guess my question would be uh, that a lot of people have these for me. I got three kids, but how do you balance it all? That whole work-life balance that people talk about. How do you balance your life? Like, how do you schedule your life and 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 do all this? Because, dude, life is tough, and you seem to handle it pretty well with as much as you do have on your plate. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say the the real answer is Tracy, probably <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> um, to, uh, to be honest, uh, a good woman. <laughs> yeah, to, that does seventy five percent of that stuff. Um, yeah, it is, dude. You, as you know, like you said, you have three. It, it's like there's always something going on. That's why. That's why. Years ago, I always used to work out later in the day too. Like I would, ne- like Tracy used to work out with a girlfriend at like five in the morning. I was like, ah, I could never do that. And then you know, w- w- that's when I started working out earlier. You know, several years back is when the kids started having practice, and they were practicing in different. They were on different teams and practicing. And at one point, she was like. I need your help, like to drop, like you can't. So I started working out in the mornings, uh, which then I've came to like actually love and getting that over with. So like, yeah, and like as for people that do follow me, they see me like I'll I'll get up early, go work out early. So like you now, have a video posted at seven a.m. Yeah, so like me, so like I have the home gym, which I'm doing probably three days a week, and then I went back to a gym, uh, commercial gym for probably three days a week or whatever. But if we go to the gym, even I get up at like we get up at like four thirty, and then at the gym by five, dude, we work out. We're like home by like six thirty. So it's cool to be done with my workout, and then if I want to do cardio, I'll just do cardio later at the house or whatever. But and then just start my day. But it's like she'll usually well now two of the girls drive because like Lexi Peyton's gone, so we're, we're down to like three kids. But I mean, even even before that, it, it is it's just hectic. There's always. She's going one way, I'm going another. There was a point too where we had all four girls playing travel soccer on four different teams, and they'd be at like four different places. It, I mean, they could sometimes be in four different cities. So like, I would take a kid, Tracy would take a kid, her parents would take a kid. You know what I mean? So it's like we would always miss a game or two because you have four kids on four different teams playing like on a Saturday. You're not making it to all four games typically. <laughs> so Bro, it's that's like, some wild shit. Yeah. Dude. So fortunately, her parents live. Right like, by us, so they they've been a huge help. Like these last like however long they've lived there, five ten years. Um, so as as bro, imagine adding because like dude, elegance is right here. Mm-hmm. It's 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 our company. Your kids do gymnastics. Right <laughs> SJ essentially does gymnastics. Yeah, dude. Can you imagine adding that Adeline, slice Adeline, into your schedule? Adeline does volleyball now. Yeah, did it did it a couple years ago. She tore mm-hmm. ACL last year. Didn't do it. That added. One thing was a fucking trip to us. Yeah. Like, that's all I'm thinking about. Like, I'm, I got, I'm feeling it in my chest <laughs> as he's talking. Because for as selfish as we seem as men, you know what I mean? As selfish as we are as men, it's like, ah, if I didn't have Tracy, I couldn't do it. If I didn't have Hannah, I couldn't do it. Like, oh, no, I couldn't do it without Hannah. Oh, and no, and you couldn't yeah. do it without Tracy. And it's funny, that was the first thing you said was a good woman. I believe it is crucial in life to have a life partner, but dude, it's, you have to also be selfless as a dad. Like the second that you became a dad, you were like, yeah, you were like, Hey, I got to start working out at fucking 5. AM. Now I got to wake up at four 30. I got to get to yeah. the gym. The girls need me to do this. They need me to do that. Like for as selfish as we seem sometimes now, we, it's not that we're not flawed and fucking leave okay. our laundry everywhere throughout the house <laughs> and do dumb <laughs> shit. <Dishes everywhere. laughs> It's not that we're perfect. It's that having a woman that genuinely loves you makes up for all those little things that we do and get bitched at. Like, those are just things that you 
that shouldn't matter if you're being the best person you can be. That's why Tracy puts up with your bullshit. That's why Kim puts up with your bullshit. That's why Hannah puts up with my yeah. bullshit because I'm genuinely being the best person I could possibly be. And I have a couple flaws that don't seem to be leaving. <laughs> Those are the ones that I'm like, I cannot let them go. They're just not going. I love you so much, but they're just, I can't stop it. But it's something that what you just said a lot was selflessness. Yeah. It, it's the fact of your girls need you to do X, Y, Z, then that's what you're going to do. And that's something that whenever people ask about the work-life balance, there has to be that yeah. at that point because it's your family. And that's also why, you know, you work so hard, but your work is fun. And that's the great thing that makes you an even better person because the harder you work, kind of the more fun you're having because you're making more money, you're having more of an influence, you're having more of an impact you are literally living life to the fullest extent. Yeah, like <clears throat> the the whole balance thing, I think, is like, I don't want to say like there is no balance because there there is to an extent, obviously, right? But it's hard to have balance, like you said. It's, you try to, be, I think with anything, you try to balance, I mean, all of us, it's like with all your training and then work here and all, it's like you try to balance everything the best you possibly can. But it's like, I think what you just hit on, for me anyways, personally, is, is a huge benefit like because i love what I, I like what i do you know what i mean so like dealing with all the kids stuff or helping out where i can helping tracy where i can is fine getting my workouts done early in the morning but then like when it comes to doing anything access ledge athlete wise or social media wise and then also wholesale wise it's like again i get engulfed in this industry supplements this company and it's kind of like that's fun shit for me so i always also think in the back of my mind it's like i could be doing a far fucking worse or harder job like right it's like i mean i, I could be doing hard-ass manual labor digging ditches somewhere like you know like respect to all those people that do that shit it's like because I, I couldn't fucking do it probably you know what i mean so it's like i'm not doing that i'm doing fun stuff i'm on my phone i'm on the computer it's like so that i think is a huge benefit and blessing that I, i'm able to do that and that, that makes it it does make it a lot easier to balance because it's like i enjoy what the fuck i'm doing well, and, and I said that because Hannah just kind of helped me gain some perspective on life the other day, and it was about the work and the fun and all these different things. And because we were talking about Emmy mm. and Emmy doing gymnastics and me being alpha male Seth and fucking <laughs> work hard, motherfucker. I'm telling my children to work hard. I'm like, you got to work hard in life. You got to work hard in life. You know Nine-year-olds don't know what that means, right? And and Hannah, we were talking about because Emmy's phenomenal. Yeah, literally the best level seven gymnast in the state of Pennsylvania. And she's she's nine. She just turned ten. Like usually level sevens are like eleven and twelve. Level eights are twelve and thirteen. She's ten, going to be a level eight. Yeah, that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> so and I'm like, fuck yeah, push that kid, make her work harder, make her work harder. And she's like, Seth, she doesn't understand that. And I'm like, well, fucking make her understand, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, you got to have that killer instinct. And then she's like, Seth, she, she, they don't know what that means. And I'm like, oh. It kind of hit me, and I realized that Emmy doesn't understand what hard work is. Why? Because Emmy just loves gymnastics. Mm -hmm. It's not work to her. She's having fun. Yeah. yeah. She does homeschool. She comes here 8 o'clock every morning and starts doing gymnastics from 8 to 10, 10.30. And then does schoolwork for four hours. And then does more gymnastics yeah. after that until 7.30 at night. Emmy's having fun. Yeah, That's not work. That's not a long, hard, terrible day to Emmy. She's literally exhausting herself doing what she just fucking loves to do. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because what do, what do we say? How hard we work. We're working hard. But yet we're having, you have fun doing yeah. what you do. And then I'm like, it dawned on me that I'm like, oh, man. Like, I like lifting weights. Whenever I'm smashing a chest workout, I'm not working hard. I'm having fun. I like doing the 150s for a set of 10. Like, that's the coolest fucking thing of my day. <laughs> that's the coolest thing of my day. And I'm like... Holy shit balls. Yeah. yeah. The more the harder I train, the more fun I'm having. The more fun I'm having in the gym, the harder I'm working. And it kind of just it just dawned on me in a way that I'm like, 
I have the coolest fucking job in the world. And it's a lot of work and it does get stress me out and get intense, but I couldn't imagine doing anything else. But then in the other aspects of my life, what else do I like to do that like I really like to do and I need to do in my life and I've talked about it forever. It's right in that fucking picture on the, on the, there, right there. I love splitting wood. It makes me happy. I genuinely have a good time swinging the axe at pieces of wood. It's a very labor intensive thing to do. I sweat a lot. I breathe heavy. I love cutting the grass. I actually like push mowing because it's hard and I get a cool workout. I'm like, holy fucking shit. I just like the work. I literally get sick enjoyment out of it. And it's like, if you can somehow find out, like, even though things are hard, that perception that I've had is, is I'm a hardworking motherfucker. And I am. But the reason that I enjoy it so much is because it makes me feel good. I get some type of happiness out of seeing a stack of wood after I'm done splitting wood. I could split wood for eight fucking hours and be like, oh, it's so cool. You, you sick fuck. Look at the dumb shit you do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, We're just talking about it. <laughs> let's ride a bike for 50 miles and then run 20. Everybody's like, what is, what is it? What is it? Why would you do that? And swim 10. Yeah. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually really enjoying it. I have yeah. a good time. I like it. Why? What do you mean you like it? Why don't you just like do half of it? Well, no, 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 no. The fun's not in half of it. The fun's doing the whole thing. Fun? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it kind of, thinking about how my kids have been doing these things, like they love it. I love it. It's not, it's work because it's strenuous and intense and work or, you know, with business is very stressful. And I have had a lot of stress from it, but I'm like, this is a really cool job. We get to be the fun of people's lives. We get to be like, let's make new products. Mm -hmm. Let's make new flavors. What flavors would they like? I don't know. Let's think of some cool flavors and then tell our manufacturer and have them bring it in. It's like, <laughs> that's your job? Yeah, it's really intense and costs a lot of money to do, but there's a risk and a reward. Let's make it happen. Let's get really good people together and make it all work. That's a pretty crazy thought. Yeah. So, like, you doing what you love to do, I mean, like you said, I'm on my phone, I'm working. Yeah. I have found a way somehow to make, <laughs> make yeah. work fun or fun <clears throat> my work. It's a pretty cool concept. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It just, it just makes it, like, like when you said that, that's kind of like, that was a perfect point, I think. Like, it, it, that makes it easier to balance, for sure. And I think that more people need to realize, and, and that's why we've always said, like, taking pride in what you do. Like, dude, even though you're a ditch digger, or you like the dudes that I thought one of the coolest projects I've ever seen done. Two of the coolest projects that were ever done was people building my pool and then Mr. Jesse Allison building the pavilion. Oh, the pavilion, yeah. Two of the coolest things in the world. Yeah. Take pride in your work. It's fun. Get paid for what you're doing. But make sure you take pride because, dude, I would love to go build pools. Dude, I, I just, I thought it was cool. I was yeah. like, I would love to be a part of the masterpiece that is in my backyard. Fucking awesome. It helps, too, like, if you, obviously, if you enjoy what you're doing and you have a passion. Because I'm sure there are people that are out there that have jobs that they're fucking miserable in, right? And it's like, me, with these companies, and I have such a passion for these companies, it makes it that much easier to do everything I do. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that also makes it not feel like work. Because it's like, when you actually enjoy what you're a part of, it's like, it just comes as, like, second nature. Like making you know we've we've talked about not just here or us or our athletes or just any companies it's like posting about the company or posting about products to me it's never like oh fuck i have to make a post about hydraulic or you know what i mean it's like i'm just fucking posting about it because i love the fucking company i love the product i use it this is what i'm doing and that goes back to what you're saying is like you're just kind of showing what you do in your everyday life I and mean, it's kind of what social media is for the most part um so it's like I, I feel that's a huge thing too. Is like if you actually love the companies you work for, you have a passion for it, or, or what you're doing every day, everything should come as second nature. I never once think like, oh, I, you know, what I mean, there's, it's not, fuck, I got to do this. It's just like I'm just doing it well, without it, even thinking about it. It's like, and what, what's funny too is like you know, you mentioned like you know the people that do dislike their job they dislike what they do it might be because it's just really really hard fucking work or they work with a group of people that just aren't honestly like the people mm. we work with 
at the end of the day though like if you're still really good at what you're doing even though you fucking hate it you can find joy by sharing that on the internet mm -hmm. i catch myself half the time watching videos of carpenters cement pourers like people doing these crafty fucking like high skilled jobs that i could never imagine doing i actually cannot do them yes and that's what i'm spending my time watching and if you go into the comments it's 10 other cement or concrete guys saying oh yeah that's a bitch i fucking hate doing that part of the job or dude really nice work how'd you do that so like dude if you hate your shit if you hate the people you're working with but like you're really good at what you do you can still create a whole influence on the internet posting about those things i love watching those videos well i think it's a lot of perspective because i agree 100 percent. yeah i think it's a lot of perspective of who you are and what you do i think that people there's such a sometimes people put a negative connotation on certain things and it's like no no no. the the being a hard-working motherfucker was also making sure that you take pride in what you do like take pride in it like dude if you're a carpenter be the best fucking carpenter you can be literally be the best one you can be Whenever you're being dad, be the best dad you could be. Whenever you're fucking your wife, be the best motherfucker you can be. Like, it's very simple. Be the best at what you're doing at that given time. And if your job is to go dig holes or put up fences, like Jeff Galia, JG, one of my favorite people in my life, literally had such an influence on me at a down part in my life. Mm -hmm. And he was always coined as the dude that will never do anything with his, with his life whenever he was in high school. That's what teachers told him. You'll amount to nothing. You'll amount to nothing. You'll amount to nothing. Well, he kind of had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, and he knows he's not the smartest guy in the book. But that motherfucker did some pretty incredible things. And whenever we would go do things, I built that like, yeah, you think of that. I'm like, yeah, it's a fucking nice fence, dude. Yes, yeah, so we're some fort building motherfuckers today, ain't we? I'm like, yes, we are, Jeff. You want to go get a hoagie? I don't eat hoagies, Jeff. You want iced tea? Yeah, I'll take an iced tea, though. <laughs> like, so many great, wonderful things because building fences is such a bitch because most of the time you don't get shade. Mm -hmm. There's no shade when you're building a fence and it's because you're out in the open fencing something off. And it was so many times of just fucking shitty, hot, ignorant digging. And somehow he found joy in the day. And I'm like, man, how the fuck are you smiling, laughing? He's like, we ain't got no bullets whizzing past our head. And I'm like, well, that's a good point, Jeff. He's like, we're not overseas. He's like, we're in somebody's backyard drinking cold Gatorade, digging holes. And I'm like, my man, perspective. <laughs> yeah. So important. So yeah. it, it, it's just... I mean, you meet so many great, you can meet so many great people that can help change the perspective of how you look at your life or your day or your job or whatever it may be. And I think more people need to do it no matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do if you enjoy it or if you are using this job as a stepping stone to get to the next level. You have to go through those. Like there's a lot of people like we were just talking about your brother coming out of school and it's like, you're going to have to work a shitty job first. <laughs> you it's inevitable you're doing it dream job isn't like first one out of the gate <laughs> no you're, you're not going to be the highest level accountant in the in berks county <laughs> right out of college you're just not you're dude. not only going to like do you're going to be you like. doing a lot of things you did not want to do probably has nothing to do with accounting like nothing <laughs> you are what is called a bitch yep yep <laughs> but because you will be your first job like whenever we were doing that little game here i was like what was your what was my first job my dad's bitch i did whatever that dude said he said clean the toilets clean the toilets if i was mopping floors i'm like why am i mopping a floor where there's sawdust i don't get it <laughs> well clean the fucking sawdust make sure there's no fucking sawdust around and then make sure it's super clean and, and, and really nice in this area but it gets really dirty clean it now though okay dad <laughs> so i'm done asking questions just clean the fucking floor even though it sucks hey there's a bunch of piss on the floor from these guys pissing can we tell them to piss in the toilet he's like we tell them to piss in the toilet clean the fucking piss off the floor oh that's my job cleaning piss i'm cleaning piss this morning scrub the toilets too well why don't they scrub the toilets they took the shit because it's your fucking job to scrub the toilets Okay, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Rubber gloves are in the room. <laughs> Sounds good, Dad. But I think those things also help you realize and gain perspective of how wonderful it could be of not having to scrub shit off of a toilet. Yeah. It's not yours. <laughs> but that's part of life. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first job? 
What was the first thing you've ever did? Because how you're how old? Forty eight. Fuck. Yeah. A lot, of people, a lot of people don't know that. Nine years on me. Yeah. So what was your first job? I mean, my first kind of real job, I would say, kind of mm-hmm. in high school, I worked uh, as a uh, patient transporter for the entire uh, radiology department. And then, so it was both, we would take people from like the ER to like x-ray or CAT scan. That. Like then, via vehicle? No, uh, I worked in the hospital. So uh, with like stretchers and shit like that. And then- the whole hospital, you know, we'd go up for patients that are in the hospital, like bring them down for like a nuclear medicine test, a EKG, echocardiogram, stuff like that. And then we also were the same people that would go take any dead bodies from the hospital and take them to the morgue also. Hey, not going to lie. That was the last fucking thing I would have been. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> that's you why, were doing that's that. Why, you were doing that 30 years ago. Yeah. So that that's why uh, the other day when Heather Grice put that, thing in the like the company chat i just wrote oh yeah transported dead bodies that's were, all i wrote I were and nobody like really said anything <laughs> i know i yeah, saw yeah, it yeah. like i laughed yeah and i didn't say anything <laughs> yeah so that was part of it so i mean for the most part it was just transporting patients for like tests and stuff like that back and forth so we we'd go get them from their room bring them down and then we take them back up stuff like that but yeah anytime somebody like coded and died we would go up and <laughs> Slide them over onto the metal gurney and take them into the morgue. And Y'all want to see a dead body? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I worked there for a few years. Really? Yeah. Man, that's okay. Yeah. We were we were we were talking about it. It was like Bob's like, I was a pizza delivery guy that sold weed on the side. Yeah. I yeah, I dropped the pizza off, dropped a couple dime bags off. <laughs> I'd wonder what took so long to get back for the next, you know, fucking delivery, but <laughs> I just made twice my fucking hourly pay here yeah, in 10 yeah. seconds, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was making like $85 an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's a good gig, though. Yeah. I know it was funny. I did that for three weeks. <laughs> three weeks? Yeah. Maybe maybe four shifts over three <laughs> weeks, yeah. Adeline, Adeline, right now, that's what she's looking for is her is the fir- her first job. Yeah. Like she works at gymnastics and does the classes and stuff, but she wants to get away from gymnastics. She wants to go experience other parts of life. And Hannah and mm-hmm. I are like, all right, here we go. We're like, you know you'll make more money at gymnastics, right? And she's like, I don't want <laughs> to do it. I'm like, okay. So it's like, have at it, kiddo. Go, go experience what it's like bagging groceries or scooping ice cream or just anything really. You know what I mean? Like yeah. go experience it and see what you think. Mm-hmm. And you know, as a parent, that's what you just got to yeah. do. I mean, but it is cool. Cause she, she, Adeline is like, she's really into being very social. You know, she wants to be out and see people and do things. She's just always been very social. So I'm curious to see what she ends up doing. Oh, yes. Cause she gets her <laughs> license in May. Oh. Oh, couple months away. Yeah, getting close. Couple months away. It'll be good. Yeah. She's a she's the last person I'm worried about. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You're scaring the fuck out of me. I thought I was gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be okay about it. I'm not. No. It, it's just it you though. She hasn't changed. <laughs> it is me, dude. I I'm know. telling you. I was I saying know. the other day. The older I get, the older I get, the more anxiety I'm getting. It's crazy. Yeah. It's something that I normally, I yeah. used to always just be a fuck it type of person, and I still am to a certain extent. But it's on, it's a fuck it on things I have control over. Mm-hmm. But now, like as the kids get older, and like as they're developing, I'm like, I hope I did a good job. <laughs> like all of all of my my 16 years of being a father, like, <laughs> did I do a good job? Like, yeah. I, and I hate and I hate it because it's not actually like that. Actually, has no bearing. It's not that, like, you can say, because Adeline's such a great kid. She's insanely smart. She does incredible at school. She's, every teacher loves her. Everywhere she goes, she's polite, well-mannered, all these things. I have nothing to bitch about. However, like, I worry about the other aspects of life. And as it gets bigger and more important, it's like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's well, where my that's anxiety you is. Do, though, is this, because it's like you hope you molded them and guided them into just making the right decision. That's where I'm at. It's like. If they're out at a party and fucking who knows what's going on, I'm like, God, I just hope they make a good decision. My parents raised an incredible young man. Look how great I am. I know I wasn't making good decisions. But man, <laughs> like whenever I turned 17, all of a sudden I became a different human being. 
how did I go from being such a, a mama's <laughs> boy that, you know, worked for my dad and then all of a sudden, like, come 17, I'm like, man, I really like lifting weights. Like, steroids look pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Where the fuck, where did they come from? How did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> man, I wonder how this cocaine smells. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I'm 19 years old, and like, hey, man, like, you guys blow. I saw movies with this stuff. Like, you want to do some? I don't think so. And, like, as the party increases and girls show up and fucking more people do it, and all my buddies are doing it, and we're drinking, and I'm like, so what's this stuff do to you? Hey, you're going to fucking have a blast. <laughs> yeah? He's like, so you're going to fucking feel wild. You should do some. There's a lot here. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. I'll do one. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I have the fucking time of my life. And I'm like, I love cocaine. <laughs> I went from being such a sweet, young 16-year-old boy that treated women so nice to, hey, can I do some bumps off your titties? <laughs> <laughs> Where does that come from? How does that occur? That cannot happen in life. But that's what happens in life. That's yeah. that thing that nobody likes to talk about and pretend doesn't exist. Is like, hey, man, there's some wild <laughs> shit. Because when you're young, you're wild. You know, young and dumb, old and wise. The only way you get old and wise is to be young and young dumb. And dumb. it's like, please no cocaine bumps off the titties. <laughs> 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 but it's this, it's fucking, that's life. It's life. And, you know, like I was joking, my parents raised a sweet young boy and I became this fucking mayhem <laughs> of a man. And it's just kind of how life goes. This is what it is. <laughs> There's a lot of things I shouldn't have did. Mm. You, you say oh, the same. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> I'd probably be dead if it wasn't for Tracy. I would say. Being de yeah. Dead or in jail, one yeah. of the two, without a doubt. I don't even know where I'd be if yeah. I didn't have Kim. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I would have ever moved out of my fucking parents' house. I'm serious. Like, I don't know. <sighs> 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 You know, and, and the funny thing is why a lot of people really like this podcast and, and you so much is because we just don't pretend that that didn't exist. Oh, it was like, very, we're very open about it. it very because, real. Because a lot of people also live these things and, you know, you know, we try and hide some of these things here and there, like bury them like, ah, like everybody likes Seth. Yeah, such a great dad. He's got the companies and all this. I'm like, I'm still a little bit of a fuck up, everybody. <laughs> I'm not perfect. We are. You're not perfect in life. It's okay. Just be you accept it that's again like we started the, this whole podcast with that it's like i think that's what draws people to to other people like you I mean if you're just a fucking honest person and be yourself and don't try to put on this fucking fake facade on social media you know what i mean like like the, the worst thing ever is when you see somebody on social media and you follow and you think they're this and you meet them at an event or at, in person you're like fucking guy's not anything like like i thought or whatever you want the you want the exact opposite where you're like, man, that motherfucker's just like who he is. You like on the internet, you're like, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's what you want, and that's what it should be. So I think it's like, again, if if you don't try to put on this fake facade and, and act like you're perfect, and and people see you're a fuck up too, you struggle with shit, you fucking jump through hurdles, you fucking whatever, you struggle just like everybody else does. People resonate with that shit, and they re they know like, okay, this is a fucking normal fucking dude or girl, whatever, and it's like. That's what people resonate to and, and can, you know, like uh, relate to. Yeah, relate to. That's what I was trying to think. Um, yeah, it's just I think that's the and there's there's not there is a lot of people on social media that are like that, but then there's also a shitload of people that aren't. Well, like isn't that it either. isn't it terrible that you're scared to be yourself sometimes because you know you're not perfect and you have a couple a uh, couple things in your in your skeletons in your closet from your past? And it's like, dude, everybody does. Yeah, people get really nervous that oh man. They might bring up that I did that I did drugs in college. It's like, oh no, I did them. It was really dumb, and I did them. You know, I, I at some point you got to fucking cut the bullshit though. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, but a lot of people are afraid to be themselves because it may be something they did in their past or or something that they fucked up, and they're like, oh, I can't believe I made that bad decision. I made a bad decision. It's it was very uncharacteristic of myself to do so. I just got caught up. Because you see all these young people on the internet, and I'm like, dude, you're 22 years old, making crazy money. Dude, you're you're going to fuck up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, it's like, and all these people are taking this crazy advice from young people and this and that. I'm like, hey, you probably shouldn't have took advice from me when I was 23, 24 <laughs> years old. Yeah. Like, I know what I was doing. I was doing some cocaine and some steroids <laughs> and chasing pussy and doing dumb shit. And it's like, that's kind of what you do. 
And for that, for the internet to be as prevalent as it is in so many people's lives at that young age, it's like, hey, you probably shouldn't ask advice from those people. You, you, you better be careful because you're living and learning and figuring things out. And if you're young and wild, like people think the trend twins are wild. I'm like, bitch, I made them two look like a fucking saint. Like saints, those two, those two, you want to talk about how fucking wild <clears throat> I was. Like they're talking about, oh, you know, I overdosed on caffeine. And it's like, bitch, I was eating three Anadrols, squatting 600 <laughs> fucking pounds with a nosebleed. Yeah. Like I was fucking crazy as a motherfucker. <laughs> like, how do you think I became who I am? Yeah. I didn't become who I am by fucking, you know, you know, playing by the fucking rules. I played, there were no rules, no rules. that existed. I mean, I, you that they didn't exist. I mean, that's why I'm paying for it now and some of the things and how I have to check my life. But make no mistake about it, everybody that is at a crazy level in life has done some ignorant, questionable, fucked up shit. Oh, because yeah. that's kind of how you get there. That's why people like them is because they are cra on the crazier side. Mm -hmm. But those are things that you you pay to play, motherfucker. Yeah. And, but that's that's who they are. <laughs> They are being themselves. Yeah. That's why I love them is because I'm like, you two are just being a dude, just being yourselves, a couple of fucking idiots living and experiencing life. People are like, oh, can you believe they crashed a car? Bitch, I crashed a car four yeah. years ago. It was a fucking Mustang video. <laughs> can yeah. you believe that they overdosed on caffeine? <laughs> Actually, I can. They're 22 yeah. years old starting a supplement company. They took too much, you stupid fuckers. Yeah, that's what you do. How do you know not to do that? Uh, well, I mean, I have tested limits. No shit, fuck stick. That's how you get there. Mm -hmm. Like, people are so quick to criticize them about what they did and this and that. And it's like, dude, everybody was crazy. You have, you're 22 years old making more money than you fucking know what to do with. You're fucking killing it in life. And you have a car that with 800 fucking horsepower. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Mr. Ferrosi, wreck the fuck out of it. Come close to killing yourself. Yes. It's just living life. It's fucking crazy shit, man. It's... I don't know. And everybody criticizes everything, like on the internet. It's it's insane. It's a fucking shit show. It's, it's a a, shit it show. is, and and the funny thing is about that too. It's like everybody criticizing in the comments all are fuck ups themselves usually, or you know what I mean, or they have their own skeletons. Nobody's they, perfect. Yeah, but they're so quick to to uh, criticize. It's nobody's insane. perfect. I don't, I'm not going to live my life and not be myself and live it to the fullest extent. I will not. I want to have fun and do cool shit with good people. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. And if I can give some advice to anybody, like those two, if I was to give them advice, I'd just say, keep being you, motherfuckers. I ain't going to kill them nothing more than they are because guess what? I, if I said, hey, you know, you guys should probably stop that. Oh, man, Seth, really thanks. Thanks for that advice. Five minutes later. I'm going to keep doing whatever the fuck yeah. I want. <laughs> so be yeah. you. Live your life, dude. But understand there's consequences. Just keep them in the back of your head. I knew there was risks involved with what the fuck I was doing. I'm like, there's my name going on the dotted line. I don't give a fuck. Fuck off, everyone. I want the world. That's how it works. So I could fucking sit here and go on forever. I know. Dean, it was awesome having you on today. Thanks for having me. You have you have you have another event this weekend. What is where is it at? Uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Mm. Uh, Muscle Link, Bethlehem. Guy Sister Nino and Bobby Guns Jim. New gym. Opening. It's a cool gym. The, the equipment looks That's fucking what, sick. Uh, Dorian Hamilton has not shut the fuck up about how awesome the new tech equipment new, is. Yeah, that's what's going was out tech, from right? uh, Korea. Yeah. They went out there and he's like, bro. Because Dorian is Dorian is a connoisseur of gym equipment. They have their whole thing with pure muscle and fitness. It's awesome. And he's like, dude, some of the angles on this new tech stuff is cutting edge and awesome. Yeah. Have you seen some of the videos they posted? Yeah. yeah I, but I mean, videos do one thing. Like, I want to fucking feel touch it, it yeah, and feel yeah. it and do it. And Because as a meathead, you want to. But Dorian was like, dude, he's like, some of the equipment new tech is doing cutting edge, very cool shit. Like, designed for the meatheads. Yeah. Looks, very cool. It looks cool. So I'll be, we'll be there while we're going to head out today. And then, so I want to lift there today and tomorrow, hopefully. Fuck yeah. So well, good. cool shit, everybody. Mm -hmm. Make sure if you want to support Mr. Dean Perone, use code Dean on absolutely everything <laughs> that Dean posts about. Yeah. Go Dean. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for listening. Keep being good motherfuckers. Bye-bye. See you guys.